Yay! It becomes quite clear we're not going anywhere. We're going to be around for quite a while. Second season, open session, underscore podcast. Open season, underscore podcast. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk to you about the subject of bullying. Sober journey. We're also going to talk about a number of other things. So enjoy your visit. Even if you have to pass through, tell a friend. Because we've got, uh, we've got Jessica. So let's get our guests in here. Hello, Hello, Moto. <laughs> How are you doing today? Uh, I'm not doing too good because I disappointed myself. You won't believe this, but you probably will remember this. I forgot to send you my address so I could get a hat. Yeah. <laughs> it dawned on me this morning when I woke up. I went like, I wonder can I get it delivered in like less than two hours? <laughs> <laughs> I am so a knucklehead. I apologize to you immensely um, because I told you I was going to do that, and then I. I just flip my brain between now and when we talk with the show prep. Yeah, there's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna push that through tomorrow. Make sure that that happens. Um, uh, I was really looking forward, as I kind of touched on in the show prep with you, Jessica, is that I wanted to wear the hat or t shirt. Um, tell everybody how they can find you, uh, to connect with you. Yeah, so I just developed a link tree, uh, and you can find me on Facebook. Uh, every platform is Tria Stars, except for the Instagram right here is Tria Stars on Tour. Uh, and in this Tria Stars on Tour Instagram, uh, there's a link below. Uh, click on the link tree. You can see all our projects and movements and everything that we've done and are doing. Okay, perfect. I appreciate that greatly. All right, so uh, what I want to do is I want to showcase you, and you've been kind enough to say yes, uh, and uh, humble enough to tell me a little bit about what uh, your page involves, which I believe is truly an awesome page. The interviews you do are, are worth watching and learning from, but um, it does no good if I keep talking. So I want to approach a subject um, that you find very important to talk about, and that is bullying, uh, people who have the urge or need to bully others. Tell me more about that, and why is that a passionate subject of yours? Yeah, so I'm not going to waste any time here, uh, you know, if people are driving in traffic or whatever they're doing to listen, but uh, I was uh, a bully myself uh, due to my uh, behaviors of trauma and, uh, you know, feeling jealous of people's lifestyles, feeling jealous, uh, you know, of um, so simple as kids, you know, in grade five getting a TLC from their parents and me moving around to different foster homes. So I bullied, uh, you know, from uh, grade two all the way up all the way up until about grade 11 just uh even if it was you know uh jumping in someone's face and saying give me a cigarette you know um i would just uh give them a look like you better do this or uh so throwing threats out there um stealing from them just just outraged you know and not having so not having the proper resources um you know i'm 44 today this is going back some time but um 
you know, now that I work in the school board uh, for the Hamilton Wentworth District uh, here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, um, okay. I see it. I see it. I report it. Uh, we try to develop our, uh, to the best of our abilities, plans. And then I also sit on a committee, uh, the Voices Against Bullying. Well, it's a Facebook group with a bunch of parents that, uh, yeah. you know, so I sit on the committee as an ex-bully. And, you know, I'm not saying that every bully you know, has been through trauma, but there's got to be a reason behind that. And whatever that reason is, it's time to step up and go, go reach out. Right. And, and time for everyone to be aware of those behaviors and where does it start and how are we going to stop it? Okay. Those, those are two roads I want to go down. Where does it stop and how can we stop it? But you said something, uh, uh, a number of points you made there, but I'm going to pull one of these out. One of those points out, you said, that you recognize it and see it with the responsibilities you have now. What about those who don't see it? Can somebody be trained to pay more attention or is it just sometimes people sweep it under the rug and say, Oh, that, that, that kid that's getting bullied, they'll, they'll get over it. Uh, what comes into play? Why some people that you may, I'm not going to call out the people you work with. I almost did that. Let me, let me pick something else that others won't pay attention to it or are they just blind to it? You know, I think it's a little bit of both. I think that, you know, it's a it's a lot of work to go and report and to do this and that, but it's also a lot of work to follow up and to engage with that child, uh, you know, to make sure that, um, you know, they're they're disciplined or that there's a responsibility behind it saying, you know, if you're if you're uh, doing this, like what what is your problem? And let's let's figure this out. Maybe that child doesn't know. So the other thing is, is we have individuals that have aggressive behaviors. It's a part of their diagnosis. So um, what is that plan then for that individual so that they're not out there doing it? Higher up the supervision and hallways. So when we do surveys, it's like, okay, well, the bullying is happening over here and then it's happening over here. So let's up the supervise, uh, supervise this area a little bit more and, and talking, talking to the children talking and, and allowing them to feel comfortable to say, you know what, when I go to the washroom, I don't feel comfortable. Or when I go to gym class because of this one individual. So it's really, really pushing individuals to talk about it and let them know at a young age that it's not okay. So education. So sometimes would it be safe to say communication is not where it, where it needs to be? I, I would agree. So I think that, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can. I mean, sometimes you got, you know, 50 staff with 500 kids. It's, it's, it's a jungle, you know, you can't control all the monkeys running around. So it's a, uh, it's a zoo out okay, there. That's, you know? that's pretty good. I work in a kindergarten right. class. My class has 35 kids and, oh, and it's wow. busy, right? Oh man. So, I, I give you, I give you props. I give you credit. <laughs> Cause that's a, that's a lot of lives that you're trying to, to take a look at and a lot of emotions and a lot of things that are happening that you can't see. You're just seeing the end result that's happening in their homes and you just get it, get to see it act out when they're in front of you. How was it for you? How was it for you? Now, you mentioned anger and a number of other things different, you know, bounced around in different places. Uh, was there anybody you felt that you were comfortable to communicate with while you were going through that at a young age? Yeah, you know, I, I really uh, respect all the teachers that put up with me. Uh, and I say put up with me because it was, it was a hey, long awesome. process. First of all, you're awesome in my book. I don't care what anybody says about the past or whatever. But listen, you're an awesome person. And I told you that in the show prep, but you're, you're an awesome person as is. But go ahead. You were saying. Uh, and, you know, to this day, I'm still in contact with some of those teachers and, really? you know, some some uh, of the therapists, they they did their work. And, you know, actually, one of my therapists was uh, uh, my maid of honor in my wedding. So, uh, so wow. much that I, you know, empowered them that they, they did their work, though. Right. It's it's a process. It's not to say, you know, again, I've lived in 50 different homes. So, you know, to be moved around and, and to, 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 you know, everybody, it's kind of like past the buck, you know, I was being yes. passed around mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, finally, you know, it's, it, the, the, it, it, it works, whatever these therapists were doing, eventually yeah. it works, you know, I, it doesn't stop there. I mean, I, I think even when I was incarcerated, you know, four times I was bullying while I was in there. I was like, listen, yeah. like if anybody wants to fight, like I'll fight you and uh, right. I'm holding my ground. And I didn't even know these people. I'm just walking into a, to a jail and, you know, I'm like, yeah, like 
<laughs> it just it didn't it didn't really stop at age age 11 like it it where like even though I was in homes like foster homes and you know um yeah it just it just felt like it didn't stop uh until I really really put my ground down inside and just started loving myself so I think you know there's also the other per piece that we're bullying ourselves the self-sabotaging to say oh my gosh this is all that crap that I did to people and I just have to thank you for social media for being there because yeah. I, with the bullying, I went out and I reached out and I apologized to these people. Really? And, cool. and, and so the most of my, actually, yeah, there's, there's even one that I'm friends with, um, you yeah. know, so I just, and it's interesting to hear their side of the story to say that they were going through stuff and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Wow. So if they were going through stuff, of course, this initiated because you were going through stuff essentially technically but the bottom line is somewhere down the line you decided that that was not the course that you needed to always stand your ground and take up space and not have it violated but be able to relax and just enjoy the moment to a measured degree but still have your boundaries what was that like moving toward that that moment of just being balanced to the best of your ability we all are working on being balanced every day but just give me your thoughts. I think the accountability piece to forgive yourself uh, and to, to, to make a plan to move forward and just to surround myself with uh, the practices of, of forgiving myself and other people. Because just as much as I was hurting other people, people were hurting me. So it was like, well, tit for tat. It was yeah. a lot of anger, but to get that anger out. I mean, that's, that's, it's, it's a lot of like self forgiveness and, and you have to create your own space in your heart and your own space in your mind to, to develop a new you, a new, you know, um, when I posted stuff about being an ex bully on different podcasts, you know, I had posted in this one lady had reached out and said, well, you were mean to me too. And I'm like, Whoa, I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to say sorry. Whoa. Okay, right, so, so that had, okay, that had to be a surprise, right? You 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 weren't planning on that to pop up, but it's still you're a person who correct me if I'm wrong, you you want to address I want to say the word tackle, you want to tackle situations to the best of your ability so that you can create more space to exist in. You don't want those things to hold you back and hold you down. You try to tackle the things you need to so you can have more space to fill. Well, as they say, when you're in a plane, you can freely move about the cabin. You, you want to be able that you have space to exist in. That's the way I perceive you. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I feel like I have space for the world because, you know, um, and we'll touch on probably uh, other, other topics, but, yeah, you know, right. for, for, for me not to want to be here uh, because I was a bully or because things I've been through. So I know what it's like to be in a dark space and a dark hole. So to crawl out of all of that and say, okay, there's fresh air up here and I want to live. But there's a process to going back and apologizing to people and forgiving people and advocating for the little ones to come and new generations to make sure yeah. that they're not stuck in a corner being spit on um, from people like me, um, you know, the ex-bully. So, um, and then how can I, as an ex-bully, uh, you know, put service into the community? How can I make that change or make that difference in people's mm -hmm. lives, you know, when I see children at, at school, I'm like, you know what? I'm dealing with something right now. If you're being bullied and you're telling me this, just walk with me. Walk with me right. as I'm dealing with this situation. So it's protecting, okay. you know. So I think that um, having my guard up, but I'm kind of like that, yeah. the good dragon. I'm the good <laughs> yeah, dragon. I'm just <laughs> no, that's where I was moving toward. But you, you, got, you got there quicker than me. But that's exactly what I'm talking about. So now you're kind of like. Well, I'm going to go with you. You said dragon. You're, you're still the dragon, but, but your fire is more pointed at those who can cause harm than those who, well, are, are picking on other people, as it were, or uh, taking the dignity from other people. But at some you know, point, somebody was, somebody was pushing on your dignity as a young yeah. person. The people that pushed on your dignity, and I'm going to piggyback something you just said just a moment ago, you had not yeah. only to go speak to those you bully to, but you have to kind of find room 
for forgiveness so you weren't haunted by those who were being bullies or mismanaging your caregiving. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, uh, two years ago, I, I was bullied by a couple teachers and I really, the tables turned, you know, the tables really turned when I was like, whoa, like, is this seriously happening to me right now? But I really had to just kill them with kindness because that's all I knew, you know? Um, and my advice to somebody right now is if they are getting bullied to document, write down in a journal, the day, the time, any witnesses, uh, you know, I've been to the police station. So I think that there's levels of responsibility for ourselves who are getting bullied or for other individuals to say, because if we really search out there, if you go into Google and search resources for bullies, okay, I don't no. know. I, I don't know. I, I, I've never Googled it, but, but working in the school board or working in just community environments, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I've never really seen that hashtag like resources for bullies. I look over hmm. and I see individuals in my school that, you know, uh, are bullying. And when I see them in the hallway and they're upset, yeah. you know, I go and I talk to them and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like mirror image. Like I'm looking wow. at myself and I'm like, listen, this is what you need to do. Wow. Do you really want to be this type of person? Right. Been there, done that. And you're seeing it in front of you. Do you find, I don't know, do you find an open response? half of the time at least or 40% of the time or is it just is it a closed door and the drawbridge is up and they feel like they're just going to continue that path you know it's all about positive rapport with these students you know they 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 have their lives so for me i love the fact that i've been in one school for a long time because i see all these children grow and if they're upset sitting in the corner i can say their first name and i don't know how i remember all their names but i you know <laughs> to see them in the hallway and yeah. to see them upset uh you yeah. know but also to see them grow four years later i'm like oh my gosh thank you this person's not bullying wow. but it's teaching them those techniques on the process of emotions or regulating what our thoughts are and trying to go through life is a process. I keep saying that word, but it really is. We have to process our thoughts, our feelings. So process on who you want to be. You know, if there's an individual right now listening to this and they're, and they're a bully for whatever reason, yeah, reach out to somebody to get your own supports and, and not take your stuff out on somebody else. It's not worth it. Yeah, I love that. I love that concept about you. And you actually do say that word process uh, quite often, even in your videos, I've noticed. But but you make a very strong point. Processing their emotions is not just the young people. That's all of us. And so you've really touched on a point proves to be your knit your niche, because uh, you're making that point when you do your videos. By the way, how can people find you? Now it's your turn. It's your turn to do your plugging now. How is it? How is it that people can find you? How can they find your page, Jessica? Yeah, Tria Stars on everything except for Instagram. Tria Stars on tour, and in that there is a link, uh, a link tree. Everything and anything I've done is in there. Um, got lots of free resources going on. Journal workshops, you know, live music, uh, meditation, any kind of you know wellness, uh, you know. Uh, advocacy going on or wellness resources at that so yeah plug away okay music got to go to music i got to segue to that real quick before i get to uh talk to you a little bit uh, about sober journey and a couple of other things but i gotta i gotta do music real quick here one of my favorite things of course very important for for emotional and mental wellness often overlooked journaling is extremely important too when you start putting all of these things together as well as truly taking time in nature and other places to meditate on life is very important. But music, what made you decide? Because some people do these th different things, but they never plug music in. And it's a strong part of your page. And you find a lot of it are connected with a lot of people that want to showcase their music. I think it's awesome. Tell me more about that and for everybody else to understand why that part is important to you, music. Yeah, my dad was a DJ, so I had uh, no choice but to listen to music in the car, in the living room, on a Friday night. Um, oh, you know, wow. Even, 
even with him playing soccer, you know, after a soccer game, even if he lost or won, he would get in the car and he would play music. So it was like, you know, do you remember Columbia House where you could order those? Yep. Like, Oh, yeah. 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 So he always yeah. had, he was even DJing my school dances. So I couldn't even dance with oh, wow. the, the boy that I had a crush on. <laughs> he was there. He's like he everywhere. There. Every song reminded you of him. He's like there. He's yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right, now, now I know. Now I know what my daughters go through. So, anyway, so okay. So oh go ahead. You were gonna say something. No, I'm sorry. You were you saying something else? Yeah. No. You know what? He also did. Uh, it it was it was the. You know, my vision of my father and being a part of those moments, uh, rest his soul, it's been 20 years, but uh, he uh, would uh, do anniversaries and get elderly ladies up there dancing with him. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, you know, dancing with my teachers, dancing with my friends. Like, he was just, he was all about music. And on, it, it just were you embarrassed? Just... Were you embarrassed? <laughs> I was trying to get in there, but I mean, he was just, uh, he thought he was like a, a really good dancer, but he, he really wasn't. <laughs> he really wasn't. Okay. Hold on to that positive memory that he at least got out there and showed you, Hey, I'm going to get out there and do it. So, so, uh, wait a minute. Are you telling me, uh, you don't get out there and me doing the dancing when you, when you look, look at your videos or listen to the music, you get out there I, dancing, don't you? Oh yeah. Especially when I'm cooking. I love to, uh, oh, so there you go. Yeah. Okay. Wait, yeah. Do you have any videos of you cooking and dancing? Because that may be the thing everybody's going to want to see after today's mm -hmm. show. Yeah. <laughs> they, what? Send me a DM may... and I'll uh, I'll make it privatized. Oh, I'm going to you a private side. I don't know. You might you you might get over one million views at that point because everybody's going to go like, oh man, look at that, and just tag it. Former bully celebrates the future, and and just you listen to some of your popular uh, guests that you had. Now listen, tell me. Now I'm going to put you on a Super on the spot just popped in my head. Yeah, you've had a lot of music guests. Do not do not put them in a tier one, two, three, nothing like that. I'm not going to do that to you. But who are some of the ones off the top of your head that when they played music, it's like you love their stuff. I know you love all of them. I'll give you an out. I'll give you a disclaimer there. You love all of your guests because you know you do. I do. But who who you got off the top of your head? One, two, three, whatever you want to do, or just one that you love their sound. Uh, Sarah Smith, uh, okay. Robin Benedict, and Brenna okay. Burns. Wow. That didn't take you long. <laughs> no, you know what? For, what? They have been so supportive in the community. Anything I've done, and not to say the snap of my fingers, but I would always, always make sure that with them helping out in the community, I would make sure that they had a paid gig. Um, you know, wow. especially Sarah Smith. She's been in my school and my classrooms with the virtual support. Wow. So, and she's on an island out in BC, uh, Canada. So, um, just, you know, when you see musicians out there making a difference and it's not just the fame, it's they do want to legit make that difference. So, yeah. um, and I, I mean, I guess a bonus answer would be Ed Sheeran, but he hasn't been on my interviews. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my little mini staff, <laughs> my daughters, <laughs> we're going to start writing letters to him and tell him to be on your show. How do we do that? Because, hey, they, my daughter's got a big, they got a big uh, crush on him, too, per se. You know what I'm talking about. They love his music, I should say. So, He's yeah, great. Man. Oh, yeah. If you get, man, if you get Ed Sheeran, man, I, I, might, I might have to put a mask on my whole body and just fly out to Canada <laughs> or walk across the border <laughs> just to see the show. If I want to see it live, <laughs> that would be oh. really cool. Hey, I'll hold you the welcome what? sign for you. Just, Jay, just make it happen. Just, yeah. I, I keep hoping you make that happen. All right, so uh, that's the music part of it. That's really interesting about your dad, though. That's really cool. So you are, I call you the aficionado of uh, signing up people for music and tying in mental health. I think you're, you're excellent at doing that and bringing in different subjects. People talk about their life uh, on your shows. And you really get to it. I love the fact that you get right into it and you, you just you tear into it and then you go like I'm out. You like drop the mic. You're like okay, show's over. <laughs> it's like yep. I did it and I'm done. And you're really good at doing it in your. That's your Jeep, right? It is. This is my office. This is my home. Yeah. <laughs> this is like half my mortgage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't expect that. Half your mortgage. Okay. All right. But I love the fact you do it in the Jeep. And I am a a huge Jeep lover, former Jeep owner. But in my heart, I still own a Jeep. Uh, that I should have never gotten rid of, of which a lot of people know I, I, I start crying when I talk about it. But I love the fact we're doing the show uh, together in your, in your Jeep. Uh, but I do want to segue to this. I need you, which I wanted you, I wanted you to do this today, which is the main reason why I wanted you on, 
is because you cut to the chase and you're very encouraging and you you're spot on in whatever you're saying. We talked about bullying, but I want to talk about just briefly before we may need to take a commercial break, but I got to see whether we can, we can get this other subject in sober journey. I want to talk about right now. Mm -hmm. Many people embark on it. Many people find it tough as they become more successful moving away from their sober date. They become maybe cranky, moody, feeling that maybe they can't make it. Sometimes the support they have falls through and they have to go look for more support or better support. A number of things come into play from what I hear people telling their side of the story. What advice do you give for those on that journey so as not to quit? Yeah, so I'm just going to talk about, uh, you know, even just recently, um, you know, with the with a pandemic in the last 14 months, uh, it's been really rough for a lot of people. But uh, the virtual support, even at that, um, so again, I'm going to uh, refer people back to my uh, my link tree. Uh, okay. We have resources in there, and where there's a group that we started. It's called Renew, and it just so simply talks about little little pieces of self care. So if it's hydration putting good foods into your body, small little walks, hugging a tree, uh, journaling. So again, I also have my journal workshop. These are all remedies that have helped me. And I'm still encouraged to this day to say I'm not perfect. I'm human and I need to work on all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And all mm -hmm. of this stuff could be overwhelming. So I guess my advice to you is one step at a time. You know, and I also look at anybody's sober journey or addiction recovery of any sorts uh, to be the best of our abilities. Your journey and my journey of recovery may look completely different, especially yeah. with different, you know, if there's different religions or cultures or, or whatever is out mm -hmm. there. I think that we're all the same. We're all human. We're not robots. So step by step, um, you know, just, and, and you know what, there's going to be those days where you need a box of Kleenex. There's going to be those days where, you know, one of the things I do, um, is in my phone, I have an A-list and my A-list is my support system. I know that my A-list, if it's, you know, my best friend, you know, my mother, whoever's in that A-list, I know if it's three o'clock in the morning and I need them, they're going to be there for me. So go create an A-list, go purge your stuff. If there's any negativity on your social media, on your phone and your life, you know, um, you just got to purge your life. You got to cleanse it out and take step by step because it's, it's worth it. You know, if you're, if you're 20 years old, 60 years old, if you're 90 years old, you're completely worth it. And you know, when, when, when you start growing in different ways like that and nourish your body, other people around you see that and they'll want to be around you even more and more. Okay. And the ones that don't, that's not where our, our attention and focus go. Our attention has to be toward those that want to be around us is what you're saying. We got you know, to be balanced. I've broken, um, I, I used to harass my grandmother for money. I used to like try to kick down my dad's door for money. I, I, you know, broke into people's houses. I stole a car. I set some fires. I, I, I was incarcerated four times for my behaviors for, you know, um, addictions. And, you know, I, I have to, it goes back to that bullying thing. I got to forgive myself. You know, I'm moving forward, but I didn't just get here. It took a lot of work. You know, there's a lot of bumps and a lot of mountains and a lot of bridges, but you know, we, we have to build that support system. If it's coming in and doing free journal sessions with me and meeting other people that are in recovery, Perfect. that support uh -huh. could be right around the world, right? Like that's, right. Yeah. that's somebody, if somebody's got, you know, access to Zoom or a little bit of Wi-Fi, jump in for, for a half an hour or if it's yep. two hours. Um, yep. I, and I'm here for them. You know, anybody, and if I don't have that support, I will reach out for you. I've got, you know, resources in Scotland and Australia, Germany. So awesome. um, we're, we're growing. We're growing like trees over I here. I love it. I love it. I love it. You have no idea. You're doing exactly what I wanted you to come on the show to do. And I couldn't tell you all of that in the show prep. I wanted you to know, listen, just come on and do you, Jessica, and you are awesome. I love some of the points you highlighted. Uh, documenting the bullying is very important, as you highlighted. Uh, but the process of emotions proves to be very important, no matter whether we're talking about bullying or even the sober journey, processing the emotion. And you are offering, everybody please, you are offering to others to help them in that process 
of processing the emotions, not just you, but also others that you are connected to, which means what's important to me. Everyone needs to know they're not alone and that they do have value, but they may need to get started in a process and then learn the process of staying in the process um, Absolutely. and not just give up. Go ahead. You were going to say, please. I was just going to say, you know, I was doing an interview today and, you know, have, let me ask your audience a question or anybody that mm -hmm. watches this is you're driving your car, or you're taking a walk, or if you got your earbuds in, you, you hear a song and you connect with that song because the lyrics has spoken to you. So when they speak to you, it's, it's like you're not alone. You're like, oh, my gosh, this person has anxiety. They got depression. They wanted, you know, they, they were having suicide ideation. So it's like, you know what? If music doesn't heal, I don't know what else does. But <laughs> I, I really do think, like, all these musicians, I absolutely adore them because they're putting their story and their thoughts yeah. and their emotions out there. Then there's that word process. I'm listening to it. I'm like, I'm processing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not alone because this person who's yeah, singing this yeah. song has just embraced my mind. So there's there's a way better life out there than, you know, um, sabotaging ourselves. And I say sabotaging because, you know, and it could be a trigger word for somebody, but that's what we do when we're in addictions or any sort of, you know, um, I guess you, you could say any kind of mess. Um, and I'm going to, this, this is the real and raw me saying these vocabulary yeah. words. Yeah. Like, there's, no, there's, there's no secret around this. I'm going to yeah. trigger people, but yeah. you know what? Reach out so that you, you can start that process of, um, you know, uh, not bullying anymore or, or, or whatever it is you're going through there, there's going to be a process and, and you're going to have to start loving yourself, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Don't fight it. Right. You're going to have to love yourself at some point, even if for a moment. But you're talking about this is a day-to-day -day process of beginning to love oneself and not self-sabotaging. Yeah. But, there, but there are moments, the subject I, I truly, 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 truly wanted to talk to you about because I found, I found you and I, I, or we, I don't remember how we, we, we met. But either way it goes, or, or we, you found me, whatever way it goes, you said something. And I've been waiting to talk to somebody about, and I want to do this before we end today. Look, suicide has proved to be an almost contagious thing, whether it be millennials to an 80-year-old, people often find some reason that their existence means nothing anymore. How has suicide impacted or even, as it were, had an impact on you and what you're doing now? Yeah, so I'm going to take a deep breath for that one. <laughs> um, I was, uh, you know, nine years old, I think maybe even younger than that, standing on a bridge after I was, uh, you know, abducted and, and many layers of trauma. But I looked out uh, over this bridge and I was like, I, I don't want to be here anymore. So to be nine years old and to feel that and to think that um, and not have the resources, you know, um, is traumatizing. But as I grew older, you know, um, like I said, I, I got into those drugs and, you know, uh, the addictions and being homeless and, you know, it, it dove right in where, you know, being incarcerated, I had to be with myself and I had to really think and feel uh, to be lonely and alone. And that was scary. But mm -hmm. I think that, you know, now that I'm older, not to say that I, especially in the pandemic, I, I was telling a friend like, you know, in isolation, I'm like, oh, I just don't want to be here anymore. Like, this is so much. Right. But I knew my resources. I contacted my doctor. I, I followed up with family. I reached out my A list, you know, so and then, you know, after a week or two, I, I was OK. Like, I still wanted to be here. But it was right, the right. fact that, like, I just at the same time. So I think that when we're looking at suicide, it's there's there's, you know, mental illness, then there's wellness and then, you know, um, then the escape, you know, absolutely. And this is why I did a documentary with um, some collaboratives. So, again, you can look into our link tree. We did a, a documentary on ending the pain. There was nine of us that, uh, you know, worked together and worked really hard. And I think even just me watching myself on video talking about it, I was like, whew, this is oh. emotional. It's wow. still emotional. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it, you can't separate it out as if, you can just pick it up and set it over there. It's a part of your emotions that were trying to find their way to express themselves. But the choice that you were choosing at nine, well, you, you've made a different choice because you're expressing it differently. Uh, 
it, I find I find this subject that you talk about you have you have touched on it throughout some of your your videos if I'm not mistaken uh, some of the yeah. ones that I saw uh, you speak about it uh, in a way that others need to listen if they have not seen the documentary they need to take a look at it I need to to take a look at it too I just didn't want to watch it before I interview you because then I you know it's not the same effect uh, in the the beans. <laughs> yeah that's yeah because I would have I would have just started talking I would have took over it you would never got to say it uh, but what I want to want to say is everyone needs to be open to understanding, to being more understanding when people are dealing with this. And uh, I am glad that you're the first person uh, on both of my platforms. I have three altogether, but two of my platforms that deal about mental wellness. The first person to come on and, and speak about suicide the way you have right now. We've talked about sober journey. Uh, we talked about bullying. Uh, they all can often be intertwined based upon whether you're per se the bully or the victim, but either way it goes, you're the person that I am recommending to everyone to please reach out to Jessica, uh, point someone in her direction. Even if it's not for you, tell a friend, tell a friend, share it with a friend that her page is available to them. Uh, a person contemplating suicide, a person having suicidal tendencies or thoughts doesn't have to feel that they are alone. Now, how can, how can a person rebound, adjust, start to find their way when they've dealt with suicidal tendencies or been, well, down that road where they think that's the solution and now they're still alive? What are some things that they can do? Any tips that you can pass on one, two, three. I know spur in a moment, but anything you can pass on. I think number one is just uh, making sure that you have a safety plan. So if that safety plan is, you know, having that A-list or, or your doctor or a friend or family. So make sure that you have a safety plan. Um, I think the second one is making sure that you're a part of so, uh, any kind of like peer support groups that relate to your, um, you know, uh, I'm going to say scenarios uh, or situations. Because if I have ADHD and I'm sitting in a group with, you know, individuals that are schizophrenic, then that's not going to work for me. No, I no, need to be yeah. in proper groups that are wellness for my treatments um, mm -hmm. and my well-being. So, and then the third thing is, um, I definitely think that you know when we're when we're when we're dealing with such a sensitive you know um, topic and and real life, um, I think that part of um, and this is this is uh, this is. Uh, to, to reach out to your doctor to make sure that you're, you know, in the right situation, if it's medications, um, you know, and, and, and diets, I'm going to say this like about like not diets, but lifestyles. So if okay. you're, you know, um, if, if, if you're not living your life in, in a healthy manner, um, just kind of going through the checklist. And again, I have those resources to renew yourself. So, um, yeah. You know, I kind of look at it like this. If you're eating pizza all the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> what's going to happen? You know, you're going to feel sluggish and tired, yeah. right? You're, if you're not drinking enough water, you're going to feel hydrated. There's a lot of health problems. So if you're not fulfilling your life with the things that you need, but here's the question, is that third piece that you asked me is, you know what, maybe we don't know what we need and that's okay. So yeah. going and checking in with your doctor or a hospital and just saying, listen, I'm not feeling myself and I'm having some suicide ideation and I need those supports right now. And, you know, it's okay to say, you know what, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm planning a suicide and I need some support. And those supports are there. Like I said, with the connection with the music, you know what, somebody's talking about, like, even, um, you know, these musicians that are out there uh, sharing their story and being real about it. That's a resource right there. As soon as, uh, you know, somebody that's listening right now, if, if you're having some thoughts of suicide, reach out to myself. I'll get you those supports. And uh, even if it's global, you know, there's there's somebody out there that's going through the same thing as you. I know in this moment it may not feel like it, but I've been there. And, you know, it feels really good to get those supports and be alive and well. And then the other thing that I'm going to give this, uh, maybe I'll give it a, a little bonus, but go volunteer somewhere. Go serve oh, the community. Yeah. 
It mm -hmm. feels so good. Every Friday, I give out uh, free produce to um, <laughs> the people. I just drop it off at their door, and I yeah. love the look on their face. You know, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. That's Volunteer. cool. Listen, that you have uh, you're a very busy woman. You're extremely busy in everything you do, and you work with a with thirty five Munchkin. So you 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 work with a lot of young young children. And uh, you no doubt uh, tower above them as, as being an exemplary person uh, that they can uh, look up to and also get mad at sometimes. But I'm quite sure you can work around those and help the, their, their emotions and help them process that. Um, but I, got, I have to ask you to do this. Now, I know you just said a, some very encouraging things, but here we go. I want you to talk to everybody one more time and say what often flows through your heart and often seen in your shows that you do, your, your lives that you do and the people you talk to. Talk to everybody. We talked about three subjects. We talked about bullying, the sober journey, and we've talked about suicide. We've done that in under 40 minutes. So before you, you go right now and before we, we go and in this live, talk to everybody that doesn't feel seen and heard and feel that they are, have no value, that they're not needed, nor are they feeling desired. Maybe they've been bounced around. Share something with them so that they know that they're not alone. You know, and, uh, and I will speak from my heart, as I always do. Everything that I do is real and raw. And I always say into my, my, my lives is that, you know, the more that we share, it, it becomes a resource. Um, and it's super, super important to um, absolutely to reach out. And, uh, you know, but I think that I also feel that, you know, we have to take that ownership and the accountability to dig deep inside of us and really, really, really love ourselves. You know, I've, I've read books from Jay Shetty, Louise Hay, you know, those books, I thought I loved myself. I thought I was done the therapy and I thought, you know, all of these people, but nobody was able to, you know, go do that work for me. So if it's feeling gratitude with one thing that I'm thankful for uh, per day, or if it's one thing that I want to accomplish, even if it's getting a canvas and making a mess on it and saying, I'm not an artist, I'm just making a mess. Now I, like I feel that. like an artist. Go do those things that are like, create like a bucket list and go fulfill those to the best of your abilities. I know financially right now with a lot of people, they can't afford stuff, but you know what? I tell the kids all the time in my class, I'm like, go to your recycle bin, grab the back of a cereal box, start start doodling something but you know what um make a difference in your life and uh and go go create that positive space around you if it's people like yourself you know connecting with good podcasts and going to be a guest on a podcast like myself yeah. i didn't i didn't yeah. wake up one day and i go i'm going on a podcast tour <laughs> I'm, I, you know what and and i'm still to this day i'm still loving myself so it's it's uh yeah. it's a journey it's definitely a journey yeah. but you know what you can do it you are the ultimate podcast guest for others and their shows because when you show up in a short period of time, immediate impact and you make everything better and then it's like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> you, you totally can smooth in and smooth out. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Here we go. Can you I'm telling you. I gotta wait for the I can't pop over. <laughs> I I want you to know uh, we have do totally felt you today, and everyone that will watch this later. And by the way, I think I touched on it with you. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. But they, these shows are watched by the IGTV community. There's millions of people. They download it off of Instagram's platform. So I really don't know who actually watches these shows on a number basis. But I get a lot of people write me back, and it's more than the people that actually follow the actual show on Instagram. So I know you're having an impact because I can see my DMs off to the side here. People are loving you. And I know that there are those who will watch this and connect with you maybe months down the line. You are an impact person on this planet. And it is an honor for me to have you uh, on a show uh, saying what you have said because you're one smart cookie. I tell you that right now. Nobody should be messing with you. You're, you're, you're a really good person. I wish we were neighbors just so I could pick your brain in person. Uh, but uh, you have, you have, your time is precious, so we need to end the show. But uh, thank you so much. Um, 
I, I just want to thank you too. Ahead. Right nope. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nope, I can't you're... wait till I get you. Uh, you get a hat oh, uh, from mine. Yeah. Oh man, tell me. Hey, listen. You just you hey, gotta, you gotta wear it on backwards be... though. <laughs> it's got, no, no, no. Hey, I got you covered. I got you covered. I was ready for today, but I wasn't ready. Just show you. I no, I was ready for today, but I wasn't prepared. That's that's what I was. I was ready, but I wasn't prepared. I'm a, I'm gonna have a tree of stars week. No, it's coming. You, I'm gonna get the hat, and I'm gonna have a tree of stars week, and I'm gonna be wearing my hat backwards for an entire week. And I never wear my hat backwards unless I'm playing volleyball. So, so I'm I'm gonna do it, and you'll you'll see. I, I I'll send you the address, and you send me the uh, send Absolutely. me the hat. I, I'm wearing it because I am honored. I love your work and what you're doing, and you're a powerful person from the heart. Uh, and uh, you stand uh, on solid ground. We got uh, many that have uh, got a chance to pass through and join us. Uh, I just want to say thank you for being a beautiful woman. Uh, a astonishingly intelligent, but you have a story. When is the book coming out, my friend? Jessica, wh wh where's the book, man? I, I don't mean it's to put coming, you on the spot, but, you know, so. I do that to people. So I don't understand it. Where's the book? Where's the mini series? It's in my back pocket. Okay. All right. We got to pull that out, girlfriend. You got to yep. Because that story of your life is quite profound. The majority of people uh, that, that follow uh, these shows on this platform, which is a narc abuse, uh, rather uh, open session podcast, uh, the majority of them uh, have either come from divorce or come from the foster care system. I'm just letting you know that. Yeah. So this this the audience here is different than the one on my narc abuse TV network platform, which is mainly uh, professionals that follow that page. Here, that's why I wanted you here. Uh, a lot of people write and say this is what they want to see. Well, you, you're exactly what they were asking me to go out and find, and we end up connecting with each other. And I was like, man, it's a chain. And uh, so I put a feelers out and let people know you were coming. They went to your page and either liked or didn't like or followed, didn't follow, and they were waiting for this show for me to upload it, do it, and then upload it. I'm going to upload it when we're done. You have hit every mark that they wanted to see. We talked about suicide. We talked about bullying. We talked about the sober journey. But more importantly, you told them that there's a process and you're willing to help them with it. That's what they wanted to hear. And I didn't tell you to do that. That's just who you are. And you said it. And I yeah. can look over here to the ones that wanted to see it. And they're happy to hear that. And they will be connecting with you. Thank you so much for today. Anything else before we go? You know, I have a hashtag. It's uh, it's a long one. It's called uh, making a difference is changing the world. So, right. you know what? Um, if it, if that's you saying something nice to somebody or holding the yep. door open, whatever yep. that is, be kind. And you know what? Self compassion. Just make sure that you are nice to yourself as well. So, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you know, I appreciate you. it. Everybody's jumping on right now, and I'm just like, you guys will have to watch this over. Uh. Jessica knocked it out the Paul ballpark. Uh, she didn't hit a home run. She hit a grand slam. So you did really good. You brought everybody home. You cleared the bases, and, and we won the game because of you. Thank you, Jessica. You're a special woman. Everybody, please like, comment, share, follow Jessica. Jessica, last time, your page is? Tree of Stars on all platforms except for Instagram. Tree of Stars on tour. And I just want to say thank you so much for oh, yeah. being the gentleman that you are. And I really enjoyed our, our conversations, too, prior to the interview. So. Oh. Keep shining yeah. over there. Hey, likewise. One of these days, I'm up in Canada when they finally tell us we can start, I'll start hanging out like a planet again. <laughs> we'll be able to hopefully come over there and cause some trouble. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to my hat. We'll work that out. And yes. uh, I'm telling you, one week, Tree of Stars, on, 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 I'm going to be two weeks on, on both of my platforms. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to plug it because you're special. Everybody, goodbye for now. Oh, wait, you got something on the screen. I got to say this real quick. Yep. Uh, us, us foster kids don't get enough respect sometimes. Uh, bless you both. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, he's going to make me cry. That was, that was, the, you're very kind. But uh, you know what? Uh, children are children. Uh, the label that comes before the word kids is put on by adults. Kids don't put labels on each other. They just enjoy life. So thank you for being a good example. Thank you for the comment there. I appreciate it. We'll see you soon, my friend. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.